quality of food, like clean, organic, free range, home range, fire range, whatever the f range. Social media is designed to make you fat. And it is so frustrating. Like the last few days, every time that I went on social media, all I seen, it was full of weight loss and fitness influencers spewing a ton of misleading information. They have each their own set of ideas and ways to lose weight with their own very set of very specific rules that you have to follow. And that leaves people all over the world struggling and stuck in fear because they have no idea where to move. They're so overwhelmed and so confused at all the information and they don't know what to do. And why I'm so pissed off about this is because I used to be morbidly obese. I weighed 275 pounds and I struggled for years to try to lose the weight and I kept failing. Now, when I was struggling, there wasn't a lot of social media but it was the same, it was media spewing the same crap, except mine mostly came from magazines, radio, newspapers, television, but it was the same stuff. And what happened spewed the same crap and then left me confused, overwhelmed, scared, stuck, having no idea where to go or if I could ever get the results that I wanted and save my life because I was morbidly obese. I'm making this because social media is even worse. I could put down a newspaper or a magazine or turn off the radio. Social media never turns off. At any moment, you can turn on your phone, flip open your computer, and there it is, baby, all over the world, all hours of the day, crap. And what does it do? Every friggin' minute, it adds more crap and more rules. And hey, you ever thought of water fasting? Oh, calories never sleep. Being overweight, it's because I'm eating not healthy. Oh, I better not eat at seven o'clock, but I'm allowed to eat at five o'clock. And uh, if I just eat the proper quality of food, like clean, organic, free range, home range, fire range, whatever the frick range, then I'll get the results. Then I'll be perfect. I'll be like those fitness influencers and I'll look great and I'll have abs and... <sighs> it is so stressful and compassion and my heart goes out to people that are struggling because I have been there. On top of social media and all these fitness influencers and stuff, and a lot of them I don't think realize that they're offering confusing information because it might be working for them. And in their head, that's what makes sense to them. The problem is someone who's struggling, who are you following? Are you following someone who's never had a weight problem or a problem with emotional eating if you're an emotional eater and you're trying to copy them or they have totally different genetics than you do or body type? Because if you're trying to do that and fit you into someone else's mold and what they do, that's where it starts getting confusing. And then what happens is there's also a comment section on all social media. And so then you've got struggling people yelling at other struggling people, do this, don't do this, no, you gotta do this, oh, do this. And then other people going, no, it's okay, it's all right, we'll be all right, just be okay. And then you've got more advice being given and then people are getting more confused. And so what happens is the social media is instilling this fear in people because they now have access to all this information. And then, so you have all these how to's and all, you can Google anything, anything you want and you'll learn how to do it. The problem is there's so much information, it causes people to freeze because they're like, I got everything in the world. I got all this information at my fingertips, but I don't actually know how to do it. And if I do it, what if I don't do it in the perfect structure that they've set and follow all the rules? And what if I eat past seven o'clock at night? And what if I'm hungry in the morning? Or um, what if I want carbs, but I'm not supposed to eat carbs? And then they're like, whoa, it causes, then what happens is they're like, okay, it's over, um, you know, eating, unhealthy food is making me overweight, so I'm gonna only eat healthy food, but then what if I crave a donut, and then I eat the donut, and then, oh, now my diet's out the window, I'm gonna give up my goals. You nailed it when you said the rules part, because each cult has its own set of rules. So if yes. I know about, let's say when we grew up 80s and 90s, there was like 10 diets. Yeah. Now there's 10 million different diets. So what the 
what the mind does is take on each set of separate rules and try to combine yeah. them. And yeah, it gets very confusing. It, so like on one diet, you're allowed a donut and the other one you have to eat it after seven or you can't eat it before. Or in the other one, you're not allowed processed sugar, but cane sugar is okay. <laughs> it's like crazy. And then, and then that's a really good point, Sassy, because then what happens is not just the fear of, am I doing this diet right? But the fear of food happens because now anywhere you look, you can pop open any social media, look anywhere and someone will tell you something you're eating is bad and you should be scared of it and never eat it again. And so now it's like pepper. Nope. Eggs. Nope. And nope. If, if you nope. guys don't realize me and Nicole been on social media for like nine, almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. So we know how the algorithm works. We choose most times not to play the game. Which but is, if you guys don't know, this might be helpful advice. If you're into something, an algorithm gives you what you, know you agree with. But then the next, as you keep scrolling, the next post says something completely opposite to trigger you. So that's how it keeps you on the app. It gives you more of what you want. And then every second, third post, it'll be somebody that disagrees with you. So then it keeps you going and going and going. And then you're stuck with all this information and you don't know where to go. Social so media algorithms work on polarization. Yes. Meaning, you know, two extremes of the of a topic. And that's what happens. And then you go and you look at the comments section and then you've got everyone commenting on that specific set of rules going, no, do this. No, you got to do this. No, this is worse. No, this is better. And so then what happens is we're in a big complicated storm of things. And then Kyle and I see people in real life struggling. And then we see all these people in the comments section just going, I don't know what to do. I tried this. I tried this. I keep failing. I'm coming to you because you seem like you have common sense. I am lost and you make the most sense. And it's like, this is why I'm making this video because Kyle and I both, like we've lost 130 pounds each and kept it off for eight years. And how we did that was we had to drop the BS of the weight loss and fitness industry and do it on our own with our own set of rules and what worked for us. And I will share, um, you know, how I did that in a minute. But um, what I want to say is social media has complicated weight loss so much. And actually, it's very simple. It, it's not always easy to do, but it is very simple. There's only one rule. So you can toss everything else out the window. The one rule is it's calories in, calories out. In order to lose weight, you need to be in a calorie deficit. And a calorie deficit means you need to consume less calories than you burn. You can do that through eating less or, or by exercising more or both, but diet is the key. You do have to eat less at some point. You need to eat less and be in a calorie deficit. That's the only way to lose weight. If you're not losing weight, it's because you're in a calorie surplus, which means you're eating too much. It doesn't, it's not that you're not eating healthy enough or that you're eating the wrong carbs or you're eating carbs or that your meal timing's off. It's because you're just, you're eating too many calories and, it, and it's not to take offense or get angry at yourself. That's it. You're just eating too much. Simple as that. So now how do we make this simple so that we're not freezing and we, we can just eat a little less? and make it weight loss not a punishment, make it enjoyable because it's supposed to be enjoyable and fun. You're supposed to be able to stick to it. So this is how um, Kyle and I started to do this for ourselves. The first thing we had to look at was the all or nothing thinking. It For us it was we only eat healthy food and get rid of all the foods that we loved and that's it grass-fed, organic, clean, only what the weight loss industry says is healthy, everything else out the window. I'm glad grass-fed was just invented a few years ago because I would have been really stuck. <laughs> yeah. Well, I bought, I did all the organic. I spent probably thousands of dollars on food that I thought was going to help me lose weight because I wasn't ready to look at the eating less part. And the all or nothing thinking, all it did was get us in trouble, meaning we would chuck everything out the window and only eat healthy, only follow the rules. And that was it. If we broke them, if we ate a cookie, the diet was over and then it would trigger our emotional eating and then it would just end up in this never ending cycle. So we had to stop doing the all or nothing and say, 
what if we did both? What if we ate a balance where most of our diet is full of nutrients? You know, we're eating healthy fats, protein, carbs. Sometimes it'll be like the regular white kind. Most of the time, slow digesting ones like whole grains so that it helps us feel full. Fruits, veg, protein, drink lots of water. Um, enjoy treats on top of that. So you're eating mostly nutrient dense food, but also enjoying treats, not getting rid of anything, not all or nothing, but a combo. We did the same thing with exercise. So before yes. when we were struggling, it was exercise like a maniac or <sighs> do absolutely nothing and sleep on the couch all day. And at 275 pounds, and Kyle was 375, physically we really couldn't do a lot of exercise. We weren't fit enough. The only thing we could do was walking, but we were forcing ourselves to try to do this stuff that we just couldn't do. So finally, we did a balance. We decided on a balance of food, including our favorite foods and lots of nutrient dense food. And then we walked and we just set up a goal 15 minutes every day, rain or shine, get out there. We needed to take a lot of breaks because we both had a lot of like heel and leg and foot problems and stuff because of our weight. We just took breaks and eventually we were able to go through. And to get the ball rolling, when we say we did like ate a little less, that's what we mean, a little bit less. We yes. still ate a whole bag of chips. We just split it into two bowls. And that is my number two. And for exercise, move a little bit more, not going crazy, just a 15 minute walk. 15 minutes. So the next thing we did is exactly what Kyle said. We started to make slow, small changes. Before we literally did everything at once and it was too much. So. We started with two things that we thought we could do that were small enough that we figured we wouldn't notice them. So the first one was every night for a snack, we each ate an entire family size bag of chips, both of us each an entire bag. We thought we don't wanna get rid of the chips and we're not ready to eat only a portion, which was like 30 something chips. So we decided to pour our chips into a big bowl, a bowl, ah, let me get it. We still have the exact same bowl. This is literally the bowl. So we poured uh, the bag into here. Yeah, what, we have two of these. Yep, we each we each got one. And then when you know my bowl was done, that was it. So instead of eating the entire bag, I was eating a big bowl. Automatically, I was eating less. So I was going into a calorie deficit because instead of a bag every night, I was doing a bowl. So I was saving myself probably a few hundred calories. I wasn't counting calories or anything or tracking. I was only just eating a bowl instead of a bag and so was Kyle. And we were starting to get results like that because it was sustainable. The next change we made was we were both drinking a lot of regular pop. I was drinking seven cans of regular Dr. Pepper a day, which is like almost a thousand calories in liquid. I didn't want to give up the pop and I wasn't ready to lower the number of cans. So I just made the switch from regular to diet Dr. Pepper and saved myself almost a thousand calories a day just by going to diet and I didn't even notice because diet Dr. Pepper tastes so good. And those were two things that we could build on over time and sustain because they were easy and it didn't feel like we were on a diet. Next thing we did was we got rid of rules. Any of the rules in the fitness industry, we got rid of the meal timing, um, what you're supposed to eat, when you're supposed to eat it, don't eat past this time, only eat this time. We decided what would work for us was eating five smaller meals and spread two to four hours apart because that worked for us. So we're we did. not telling you guys what to do. No, don't we, listen to us. This is just what worked for us. This is a personal story for me and Nicole because our backs were against the wall. We had to make the scale move down or else we wouldn't be here. So yes. we had to get rid of the rules. Yeah, we had to get rid of the rules. If things that you see on social media is working for you, you know, that's cool. If you can sustain it and you like it, do it. I'm speaking to people um, from my experience and Kyle's experience only, and this is what worked for us. Um, and it's for entertainment purposes. And if it can help someone maybe make their life a little easier, cool. But this is just for me. Um, so we did breakfast, lunch, dinner, and two snacks, and we spread it two to four hours apart because it made us feel like um, we were staying fuller longer by spreading it out throughout the day, and it was helping us not overeat at night. And by enjoying things, all food groups, everything on the table, that really helped. 
The next thing we did was we had to stop labeling food. All we did was label food healthy, unhealthy, bad, and good. And the problem with the labeling was any time that I would eat something that I said was unhealthy or bad, I would think that I was bad and unhealthy. So I would be putting myself down and it would just trigger my emotional eating and cause me to go in a never ending cycle. This is why you see so much virtue signaling with people's diets and other things online, but we won't get into that. But no. why you see so much virtue signaling online about the perfect diets and what's the perfect food to eat is because of just that. When people see like subconsciously what goes on is when they see people label good and bad food, they're good and bad. Yes. If they eat that, which is not the case. No. And, and that was the problem. So then anytime I would eat anything that I looked at as bad, I would feel bad, think I was bad. And then the guilt would trigger a whole bunch of throwing my diet out the window and emotional eating and all that stuff. So getting rid of the labeling and looking at all food as on the table. Most of the time choosing nutrient dense food, but including treats as part of that balance, as part of my healthy. I made my own healthy for myself because for me, healthy was not being morbidly obese. If I stayed at that weight and continued on the way I was, I would not be here, like Kyle said. So for me, eating a balance the way that I wanted to and I needed to was my healthy and then how we did it was we got into a calorie deficit with the small changes, but also by choosing foods we loved in a balance of a nutrition plan and portioning out the food. So portion control is what helped us lose the weight. And basically how we started was we looked at the serving sizes on the backs of packages and we used those as a guide. And then we, you know, we make up a meal plan of what we liked, use the serving sizes, weigh ourselves at the end of the week. If we lost weight, we knew the portions were working and we'd use them for the next week. If we gained weight or didn't lose, then we would pull back very slightly in our portions and then try again until we found what worked. And so those are the things that we did. That's how we dropped the BS. We threw all the social media and weight loss industry rules out the window, made our own what worked for us and saved our lives. Um, weight loss should never feel like a punishment. If you don't like what you're doing, you don't have to do it that way. Cherry pick from people, find things that you're like, hey, okay, this might work for me, but don't copy. You don't know who you're watching. They might not ever had a weight problem and you do and you're trying to follow someone who the standards just they're not the same you know so and so many people i'll go on the other like side too like there's so many fake natties on the internet mm -hmm. guys and girls so that's a whole other hidden thing where they're yes. showing their abs and muscles and they're taking special vitamins yes and that's a good point and they're directly lying to you saying they're natural. they're not Yes, and that is a big thing. There are lots of people taking stuff to look as good as they do. And so then you're putting yourself up to their standards, comparing yourself to them when you're never gonna look like that I'm never gonna look like that even if I took what they were taking because my body does not work that way. So um, cherry pick, use your intuition, your gut. You have the answers inside of you, trust yourself. You know what you like to eat and what you like to do for exercise. Do that so that you can sustain what you're doing and enjoy what you're doing. And if you wanna know the exact portions and meals that I ate to lose the weight, you can buy my weight loss ebook called The First 50. The link's down below and code Nicole will save you 10%. I also um, have this cool stuff, it's called Huddle. I call it Huddle. it's actually HTLT subs. But best protein powder ever. They also have a ton of other supplements, but they have a holiday, like a seasonal flavor um, hot chocolate and it really does smell and taste like hot chocolate and then I find like fruit cereal doesn't get talked about enough at our house sassy this is actually quite delicious oh, I love it. yeah but often I show you the luckier marshmallow but there's a fruit cereal so code Nicole will save you 10% the link is down below watch this bit of this bit for more fun sustainable weight loss tips from two real friends losing weight into real world where we're being honest with you you can make it less complicated it's okay to love it stop making it so hard honey we love you 
Thanks for your support and for watching. We really love you. Be gentle on yourself and love your food and do this when you're eating your food. Like, yeah. That part's optional. Yeah. Oh, no, you gotta do that. <laughs> I love it. I love my breakfast. I love my dinner. Do it. Okay. Love you. Peace. Catch you in the next thing. Cute. Duh. Root. Knee. Put a bowl on my head. Bye. Don't see it. Remember the friends that weight loss isn't just about the number on the scale. It's also about here and here. Heart and mindset. Fight through it. You can do it. Don't give up.